Yeah. All right. Good evening, podcast world. Time for another episode of Things My Mother Never Told Me. Yes, it is. Can you say hello to the people? Hey, hi. Thank you for joining us on this evening. <laughs> we got another one of our special guests for you. Yes, we do. Cassie, say hey. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's right. As I told you while we were chatting beforehand, uh, Tanya's going to read your bio, and then we're going to let you tell your story the way you want to tell your story. We'll ask you a few questions, get you rolling. All right. All right, then. All right. Welcome, 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 Facebook family. We have Minister Cassandra M. Phipps, the LL. LPC, LLP, and CAADC. All right. Now, look at all of them. <laughs> Cassandra, uh, Phipps is, has a passion to help others gain clarity in pursuing one's life purpose through spiritual and clinical practices. Cassandra Phipps has provided counseling services since 2008 that includes substance, uh, substance use therapy, intensive home-based therapy, family, individual, and trauma therapy, teenagers and adults, clinical supervision, assessment, and management. Currently, she is the director of Children's Initiative at Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network, a licensed minister serving at Zion Hope Missionary Baptist Church under Pastor Curtis R. Grant in Detroit, Michigan, and the CEO and founder of Fired Up Ministry and Clarity Counseling and Consulting, PLLC. Lastly, she has a wonderful and energetic son. Charles Phipps Jr., affectionately known as CJ, who is eight <laughs> years old and a little ninja. All right, everybody, let's welcome Cassandra Phipps. <laughs> hey, 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 once again, how you doing? Oh, did you make me smile? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so we're going to jump right on in this. Uh, a, a couple quick questions for you. Uh, where did you attend school? Um, So I started off... Uh, going to Eastern Michigan University okay. for undergraduate. Believe it or not, I started off going as a music major. I, <laughs> I played the violin. And so okay. I wanted to be a music teacher. All right. Okay. And 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 God has some other plans. God has yes. some yes. other plans. Yes. And yes. I could probably go deeper into that later. But um but I started off at Eastern as a music major. Um I ended up not being able, able to play anymore mm. and um then transitioned into going into the counseling field. Okay. So I went to uh, Michigan Theological Seminary, which is now known as Moody uh, okay. Bible Institute for Psychology, Master's mm -hmm. in Psychology. And then I went back online to Walden University to get a master's in counseling. Okay. And um, so that's why I have um, th those. So yes, th that's my educational experience and background. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, that's funny because as long as we know you, I never would have known that you were in, in the music like that. Exactly. Yes. When I say God changed it, God changed it. <laughs> <laughs> and he made it, he made it sure you that you had no way to even stay there, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. What high school did you go to? I went to Cass Tech. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just had okay, that feeling. Me, I just had that feeling. I just had that feeling. Easter sun. <laughs> we laughing because because probably now this is this is somewhere around the 90th show or 90 some show and we probably two-thirds of our guests went to cast yes. all right now all right yeah and half of it was quite by coincidence mm -hmm. <laughs> yes i was the last class in the old building okay, okay. yep yep the last class in the old building it's, okay. it's it was in throughout my family. A lot of my family went to CAS. So yeah, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah well, well I, I was in the old building. It wasn't the last class though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're a little bit old. No, now. yeah, nowhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so let's jump into this thing here. Uh, in, in your bio, we we talked about a lot of therapy, and so what after the tra the music transition? Let's do that. What caused you to to go yeah. into the therapy? therapy game or, or that that's a very good question so um i i played that i started playing the violin at cast and mm -hmm. um I, I i fell in love with it loved it uh you know played and so when it came time in trying to uh pick a major or figure out what i was going to do i was so passionate about it and i wanted to be a music teacher of course my family <laughs> you're not gonna make any money doing that, doing that. <laughs> But um, I actually, and then being a music major, you have to audition. 
So mm. I, I uh, auditioned for, at first I was trying to go to Western, but I completely bombed that audition. You went to Western? Yes. Yes. I The, the audition went horribly, horribly. Mm. And so I had a chance to do a redo um, at Eastern a week later, and I, that went well. So I got accepted into Eastern for their music program. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when you're when you're going for music, you actually have to take classes as a freshman. Okay. Music classes on top of your general education classes. So, you yeah. know, a lot of times you don't take your classes for your major until you're like your third year. Right. But for right. music students, we had to start as a freshman. Mm -hmm. So I had already taken started taking classes and uh, but halfway through I started getting pain in my arm okay. and uh, which was my my bow arm okay. um and I it would be it was very, very painful for me to play and I was also on scholarship I had a full tuition scholarship so mm -hmm. I was like I have to be done in four years right um <laughs> um so you know I was really at a crossroads because you know I had already started on this track Mm -hmm. I'm halfway through I've completed my first two years and I'm wow. like what do I do now because you know it was too painful for me to play and so mm -hmm. I really prayed I, I fasted I really you know sought God and you know God spoke to me and and told me I was called to, to preach and to teach okay and um I'm like well God you could have told me that like <laughs> sooner uh that's just how I talk to God sometimes right, right. Know, that's I'm like, right. you me, like you had me do all of this and I not you on this completely switch. <laughs> so, you know, when 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 you know when God called me, um, I was like, okay, well, what still what do I do with school though? Right. So I ended up going to um the career center on campus and I took um a personality assessment. Okay. It, it was called the Myers Briggs yep. personality assessment. Oh, yeah, and I've done that a few times. Exactly. And I loved it because it let me know what careers or what profession fits my personality. Okay. And so I ended up being an INFJ, uh, which kind of fits like that spiritual work, mm. uh, counseling teacher. Mm. And so I figured, you know, well, well, if I can't teach, then I will counsel. You okay. know, I can still help people and work with them one on one. And so um, I ended up turning the music things that I'd done into a minor and I ended up picking sociology as my major. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop you real quick, real uh -huh. quick. Two things. I'm an INFP. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. And, and real quick, because we're about to leave this music thing in the dust. Uh -huh. Did you find that your training at CAS was equal to, better than what was going on at Eastern? It did prepare wise. me, it, especially when it came to, so I was, I was gracious enough where I, I was able to um, not take any math classes <laughs> at Ether. And um, it really helped me with English and writing because okay. in college you have to do a lot of papers. Mm -hmm. And so we had to do a lot of papers at CAS. And right. so, um, and I took some advanced classes at CAS too. So mm -hmm. that, that really did help prepare me. Okay. Um, and then also just being a studious and studying and things like that. I already had those skills right. of knowing how to study and, you know, and be accountable mm -hmm. to studying on my own. Um, you know, okay. so okay. that, yes, I, I definitely would think so. Right. Okay. All right. Then. Okay. So, so <laughs> yeah. INFJ, you say. INFJ. Okay. So that, that led you into where we are now, but so what was the, 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 well, because you didn't get to, cause I, I didn't let you get to the part about <laughs> how you decided where to go from there. Yeah. So since, since I knew I was called into ministry, I wanted to go to a seminary school for grad school. Okay. Um, but I wanted to focus it on the counseling um, piece. Okay. Um, so that way I could be a counselor. So that's where I ended up um, finding at the time it was called Michigan Theological Seminary in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, you know, so I ended up being there and it was a psychology program and um, very, very small school school. But, you know, we were a very close knit group. Right. And, um, you know, so that's that's how I ended up switching. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I just fell in love with it. So, mm hmm. OK, Sounds yeah, good. Mm. You want to go? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Da, 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 da. So you pro provided counseling services since 2008. When did you start your your uh, PLLC? This year. This year. Okay, so we'll 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 come to that. we'll come back to that. 
the so, beginning of this year. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Well, because you you decided it's fine, time for you to have your own, right? Well, you know, there's things that I, I do a lot of speaking sometimes. I, I'm very passionate about bringing awareness. Okay. And so I wanted to be able to, you know, just be able to have that platform to where I can do consulting as well. Mm -hmm. I can go and do presentations. I'm trained as a trauma therapist. And so that's, I'm very passionate on that. So, okay. um, you know, sometimes I'm asked to do speaking. I just wanted to be able to have a platform to be able to do that. Okay. All right, yeah. Cool. And, and I started making candles too. And so- when I go speak, I I bring my candles mm -hmm. and okay. you know so um, aromatherapy. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're called clarity candles. Okay, clarity candles. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so you so they you... make people tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I know. <laughs> No, I, I think it look, kinda look do I need a wave? There. Do I need a like mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah? That's right. Get 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 the mind right. Because I'm just saying <laughs> well, you gonna stop. Okay. <laughs> you gonna stop now. Okay, so okay, so then you you went to seminary, you graduate. So how did you then get plugged in? Okay, so um, of course, and then this is another thing I had no idea about, but mm -hmm. uh, when you go into the counseling field, whether there's three different options, there's counseling, psychology, and social work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the program I was in was a psychology program, but with each of those, you have to get a license. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm halfway, you know, through the program, and then they start talking about a license. I'm like, a license? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look at me. I'm like, you know, the, and the master's program is three years. So I think I was in year two. And that's when I it came up about a license. I'm like, a license? So I had a lot. I'm like, oh, I have to apply for a license. And so, um, you know, so I, I ended up, you know, when you graduate, you apply for your uh, temporary license. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, the first job I was able to get when I graduated was actually doing home-based therapy. Okay. Um, I had a, it was a contractual work through um, the juvenile assessment center mm -hmm. and I worked with families where the kids were um, trying to be reunified reunified back with their parents okay. Okay. because they were taken away for some type of abuse or neglect mm -hmm. and so they had to prove to the court that they you know could um, follow through on the counseling and things and so I had no plans of working with children uh <laughs> or families I actually started off doing substance use counseling okay um my dad had a substance use clinic and um I started that was my first experience with doing substance with, with doing counseling work okay. and so I was used to working with adults right and so I definitely was not used to working with kids I wasn't used to working with families I wasn't used to going into homes but I absolutely love the hands-on approach like okay. actually being I guess in the chaos, <laughs> right? In in in, but, the midst, in the midst, <laughs> in the midst of it all. But right. I love hearing, I love hearing and and listening to everyone's point of view and perspective. But mm -hmm. then also helping the family see, okay, and understand each other. Yeah, understand where each other's coming from. And so, um, you know, I did that for like about six months, and I was like, you know, I I like this work, so I need to find a salary, a salary <laughs> position. <laughs> And um, I had a lot of families that were in the Down River area. And so I kept driving by a place called the Guidance Center. Okay. And so, um, you know, which is Down River. And so I ended up applying there. And that's how I got into what we call community mental health. Okay. So that's for families that have Medicaid um, that need really intensive therapy. And mm -hmm. I, I was doing home base. So I've done home base for the majority of the work that I've done. Uh -huh. And that's where you go into the home, you go to the school or the whole goal is to keep children and youth in their home mm -hmm. and, um, avoid being in the hospital or avoid being in the juvenile right. placement, um, and things like that. So two, so two questions can, about that then the you, you were doing the contract type work at first right mm -hmm. and so so basically you only get paid when they send you out on the contract correct yeah correct per and session so, per session mm -hmm. uh, i see why you wanted to get <laughs> <laughs> and and so then what did you because i know you said you were you were used to working with adults in, in in the substance area what did you find easier i'm sure which one was more fulfilling which one did you find mm -hmm. easier to do deal with adults solely or deal with families 
oh gosh, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say one was easier than the other. Um, one, there's a difference with being in an office mm-hmm. versus being in the field. Yeah. Okay. I think that that was the biggest adjustment. Yeah. Um, and so I've been in the field for so long. Now it's hard for me to just see people in the office. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I like the flexibility of it. And then also when you're driving to another home, you get that break in between. Yes. You know, yes. Kind of like being in the home seemed like it's so stressful. <laughs> but mean, you, by, by doing home base, though, you get a smaller, you have let fewer people to work with. Oh, okay. So okay. It, was, it was it was easier to manage that way because I didn't have a whole bunch of people. I had a few people, but they did, they required intense work. Okay, so uh-huh. let, me, let me ask you real quick then. So the, the, you, when you say a lot of people, you know, you mean you don't mean like group sessions, but you mean just clients, back, many, client yes. after client after client. Exactly. Okay. You yes. had to have a certain quota. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, forget that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that kind but of I, 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 I enjoy doing both. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that it, it is a difference being in office versus being oh, in the I'm field. Sure. Yeah. And I had gotten accustomed to being in the field and having more, you know, right. flexibility and um, you know, that, that kind of fits more of my personality. <laughs> right. Well, I, I know because now, now I was, I wasn't a counselor or anything like that, but, but the position that I liked the most at, where I was working was that I, I was a computer tech, but mm-hmm. I went from place to, from, you know, well, in, within my building, but from location, area. location, area to area doing work. And then they, they reorged us and they put all of us on the desk <laughs> doing the work on the phone, which is like real restrictive. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. you know it's no breaks like you were saying it's, it's the same it's the same theory you know right. constant phone calls as opposed to being able to go here and do the work and then come back and then interact with people in a, in a less structured stress a less structured stressful environment yeah exactly it's less rigid it's not as rigid you know mm-hmm. um, i know my 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 cousin her daughter she's a social worker and and working in the office Gave her so much stress. I mean, she was on borderline uh, alcohol abuse. So oh, then no. they switched her to the field. And then that way she been able to balance it out. And and that worked for her because like And it's said, funny because if you talk to the office based therapist, they there's no way that they would do home base. <laughs> and for us home based therapists, they was like, okay, yeah, we can't do the office. And it's and also it was more how how can I put it? More more action in the field, you know? <laughs> I, I would think it would be. More action. <laughs> and, but I would think it would be the more difficult people to work with. Right, that's, why, is, that's why I asked you that earlier because it seems yeah, to me- Yeah, they would be more when, difficult. Right, when you go when you go to somebody's home, you're on their, ter- on their turf. And mm-hmm. so, I, should, I shouldn't say turf, but it ain't like it's a gang thing. <laughs> but, it's, but it's like they're, well. they're more apt to, to to do and say things and and, there than they would yeah. in an office setting. That's yeah, true. How, how do you do uh, an intervention I, like that? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that that is true. And so that's why it's so important to build rapport, mm-hmm. build mm-hmm. a you know what we call a therapeutic relationship because we come every week. Um, you know, oh, okay. and we would spend about an hour, hour and a half, two hours sometimes oh, wow. a week wow. with just one family, yeah. you know, that we work with. And so they, they're, they become used to us and you build that trust. And, um, but then we get to see what's really going on when mm-hmm. you come to the office, you know, you can say anything, right? Uh, but when we come to home, like, okay, I can see what's really going on here. I know. And like you, you said, we really can only the dynamics it. of it all. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then after they've been with you a while, they tend to. Really let the guard yes, down. Yes, it's gonna uh-huh. be at least one or two. They gonna really gonna tell you the real story. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I lost my thought. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that that the the home based deal, uh, and it, the thought flooded out. Unless you're able to see the signs of abuse more clearly, as right? Well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, and that depends too, because you know there still will be you know. Family Initially. secret, or and and, that, and even as a trauma therapist, there's times where I will start doing, start the process of doing the trauma work or doing a trauma assessment. Still, sometimes things don't come out mm-hmm. until after you oh, build yeah. that relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, right? right. Okay, so now I, I, yeah, my and my thought came back. So, what okay. is the what is the average length of time that you spend with the family? I mean, I'm talking. Oh about- yeah, that's a that yes, that's that's a very good question. Um. There's times where I work with families two, 
years, three years in, in home base. Cause the, the goal is to, for them to not be dependent on that level of care right. forever. You know, right. our goal mm-hmm. is to do the intensive work and then for them to step down to outpatient mm-hmm. status or, right. you know, to where they no longer need therapy anymore. But there are some that are really that really struggle um, with their behavior or uh, whether it's school and um, and you realize like this stuff did not just occur overnight. These Mm -hmm. are behavioral patterns that have developed over years. And so for some, it takes not just getting the child on board, but also getting the parents and the whole family on board. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes it it does take a lot. We we will do a um, a pre-assessment. Um, that would like look at like different life domains or how the child is doing in different areas, whether home, school, community, their behavior, they, they will get a score. Mm-hmm. And we would do that assessment every three months. And, um, you know, the goal is for that score to go down, meaning like you're, you know, you're getting better, but then right. it will be sometimes up and down and I'm like, oh, you know, or, or sometimes um, when you're trying to transition a family, that becomes a trigger for them. Right. Because they're, they become so accustomed to where there could be a relapse <laughs> right before, was, uh, right before a, they're ready to go. Yeah. Um, right. And then yeah. you end up, you know, um, but then that, that that's another pattern that you have that we have to address in therapy. Like, right. yeah, you that know, was, that was a question I was going to ask you. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do they do sometimes develop the, uh, the attachment yeah. to you, the counselor? Yes. And yes. so they, they're not, they're not ready. Cause I, you know, you see this stuff on TV, but a lot of stuff you see on TV is based in reality. Uh, mm-hmm. So you see where, where, when they know you're about to leave or let them say, mm-hmm. you turn them loose, then they start acting up again. Cause they don't uh-huh. want, they, they, they get attached. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And that could but, be the, the, the child or the parent. Or the parent. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I already know. Cause yeah. I would become dependent on you too. Cause yeah. I already know. Be like, I told you I didn't want these doggone kids. No way. <laughs> we got her here. Let her raise them. <laughs> or not only that, you know, what, what could I do? What's a better way I can handle this? Situation? Yeah. yeah. You always come in there doing this. Cause I was up there when my, um, my aunt passed, uh, not too long ago. And her nurse, I didn't know the nurse was always coming in. They was up there saying, oh, we know her. She she here all the time. I was like, oh, okay then. Because, you know, she was in there talking to her like, you know, they, they was best girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's even as a supervisor, um, that's one of the things that I had to work with with the therapist that I supervise is because it was hard for them to transition. Yeah. And so sometimes it's hard for the family, but then also sometimes it's hard for the therapist because mm-hmm. it's like I put so much... I supported this family mm-hmm. and the concern is, okay, if once I leave, then what is going to happen to this family right. and not having that closure. And yeah. sometimes that's hard for, uh, for us as professionals too, uh, yeah. not knowing what's going to happen next. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I know they come very dependent on you. Right. I know that. Yeah. Well, you know, you, yeah. Yeah. Cause when I was doing my, my, I know I would, when I went back to Cornerstone, I was taking classes. I had to do, they put me on a, uh, this track to get some credits first. And it was a, a social work type track. Mm-hmm. And so I literally had to interview a social worker. Okay. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to school for this. What is y'all talking about? You know, I literally had to tell them, this is not what I'm going to school for. So they cut my requirements down. But that's, and that's what they told me is that sometimes the workers themselves become attached to the families mm-hmm. and they got to be very careful not to do that. Because exactly. They, because you, you, I mean, you, it's it's hard to deal with people on the, that as long like you say every week, one to mm-hmm. two hours a week every and then two mm-hmm. three years, come on now that's a serious attack emotional attachment you can get with people, and I know they started you know seeing how you improve their lives and how you yeah. change situations yeah. so it's like so that dependency can't help but to be. You know, they become your family for real. <laughs> Next thing you know, they celebrating your birthday. Oh, she's coming over today. Let's have my birthday. <laughs> Okay, so oh my God. are you able to talk about the work that you do with uh, Detroit Wayne? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I'm currently the director of children's initiatives at Detroit mm-hmm. Wayne Integrated Health Network. Uh, we're in Wayne County, and um, we're uh, so specifically with the, uh, the children's services. Um, we have about like 14 uh, children providers in Wayne County that service children that what we call serious emotional disturbances. Mm-hmm. 
And we also have um, about 13 children providers that work with youth that have intellectual developmental disabilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we also have autism providers too for okay. that does autism services. So uh, we oversee all those providers. We partner with them, we contract with them. And, um, you know, it's really for those that are like really present with higher needs, and higher risk and needs, mm -hmm. needs and really need that support. Right. And so um, it's it's a whole whole gambit of services that are available. So they're very they're very beneficial. And so how, how does one uh, get in contact with the agency to get those services? So um, there is a criteria um, It's for children that have Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And we can actually service from age zero to up to 21. Okay. Now, I know you might be thinking, like, how can you service someone age zero? Um, so what I mean by that are pregnant, um, you know, those that are expecting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they can start what we call infant mental health services. And um, so, you know, there are services for, for babies, for toddlers, all the way up to the young adult up to age 21. And okay. um, just calling Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network, um, we have an access center. And they do the screenings. And once the screening is done, um, if though for those that are eligible, they can get connected to one of the providers in the, in Wayne County. And so, so they would call. You said they they would call. To get yes. Screened. Could yes. could you just get that number out? Because uh, when when Brandon yeah. started, uh, she'll let me see. Up. Out of all the things in my head, that's not memorized. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me one second, and I can give that number to you. Okay, it's 1-800-241-4949. And uh, for those that actually go onto the website, we actually have a children's initiatives uh, page. Mm -hmm. And that also outlines all the services. Mm -hmm. um, it's very helpful resources and, and flyers and things like that, videos um, that are on um, the children's initiatives page. And so that's Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network.com. Uh, dot, org. dot org. It's it's at, well actually it's um www dot d w i h n dot org. Oh okay, so it's just the uh, initials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So there may be somebody that, that, that listens in and that might mm -hmm. need those services. Well, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> we also have a faith based initiative too. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna get into that. Uh what I wanna do, I wanna switch real quick and then we'll come to the face base. Faith on the faith base. Oh. And so I I wanna take a, just a little break so we can ask you that, that question we talked about earlier about, about things your mother never told you. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so so you now you you run a gam because you started out in music <laughs> and, and, and and now you you're making sweet music with people helping helping them improve their lives. On that journey, were were there things that you anything that you encountered that your mother never had opportunity or didn't have to you know to to tell you about prepare you for mm -hmm. the music piece? No, any of it. Any of oh, it. Oh, oh, okay, okay, life. yes, just yeah, life, life just general. life, yeah. So, uh, and th this is such an interesting theme you have for your podcast, and I love it. Um, but one of the things that comes up, and we probably hear this term a lot, especially you know, I'm I'm the millennial generation uh so what one of the terms that we're throwing out there is called adulting yeah. <laughs> yes yes i've heard the term before. Yeah. yes yes so that that that's what sticks out to me um the most is just adulting and if well inflation oh my gosh you know yeah. just living as an adult uh has no other responsibility and, um, you know, trying to balance it all, um, ba just balancing life. And um, because um, as for me, my mom was a single mom okay. and I, you know, I have also have a twin sister. Okay. And so uh, she, my mom was a nurse. Um, she was a, you know, wonderful nurse and, um, you know, she had a very strong work ethic. So that's what I saw, you know, my mm -hmm. mom worked hard. She worked a lot. And um, so I get my work ethic, not just from my mom, my dad as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my dad was a doctor. He had businesses, things like that. Okay. But they they were very hard workers. And so for me, that was, you know, you know what I saw, like, okay, you work for what you want. Mm -hmm. um, the, the standard of going to school was always an expectation. Like okay. that, that wasn't even a question. Right, right, um, right. And it's so funny because even when it was kind of time for me to go to college, um, I was like, okay, mom, but well, where's the money? 
<laughs> you know, I'm just very naive, you know, when I was uh, young, I was really so naive. And I just thought that everybody had money to go to school. Right, like, right. okay, you said we have to go to college, so where's the money? <laughs> and my mom was like, boy, why are you? <laughs> <laughs> Single mom, I'm like, okay, well, then how am I supposed to go to school? <laughs> um, and so then I go into like panic mode right. and I'm like, well, how am I supposed to get to school? <laughs> and um, so I'm starting to research, I'm going on fastweb.com, um, trying to apply for some grants and, and things like that, right? And thankfully, God blessed me with a scholarship, yes, God blessed me with a scholarship, but it's like, you know, um, it's like little things that, um, that will be said growing up, but it's like, you don't, until you have to live it and experience it for yourself, it doesn't really, now it's starting to make sense. Right. Um, oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> just yeah. like being a mother, you know, you only, ain't no rule book, you, and they don't be telling you how to prepare. Well, they, well, they call itself putting the book out, but they don't tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you, it tell you a good, a good enough story to make you buy it, but it don't tell you the truth. Oh, exactly goodness. and you know my you know my son was born really early mm -hmm. um he was he was supposed to be born september 15th he was born july 3rd yeah. so i didn't even get a chance to read the parent the, the uh <laughs> what to expect book <laughs> i had the book oh i know i know girl. i literally was thrown into it um you know but ironically my you know by me being a twin also twins are known to be born premature mm -hmm. me and my sister were premature we were two pounds we were okay. born um okay. we were supposed to be born in december we were born in october and uh my son was one one pound and 13 ounces and so he Ooh. also was like in the NICU and so it's like as i look at the comparison between my mom and me it's like experiencing similar situations but you know even mm -hmm. though your stories <laughs> until you got you go through it yourself you're right it's yeah, like so wow right. i can only imagine well, well you know the, the the funny thing is that it's just like you said we can we can see it all day long but when the spotlight comes on us how much of what we saw do we really remember mm -hmm. and even if we remember do we know how to implement it and exactly. a lot, and a lot of times, that's where the problem comes in. That is, we you can see stuff. That's why when they when you go to these school in class and they tell you, okay, we're going to do a uh, what do they call those things? A simulation. Mm -hmm. But no, you're going to actually do the simulation because a lot of people <laughs> don't want to. I, I hate doing simulations, <laughs> but we're going to actually do the simulation because if you don't actually do it, when it comes time to really do it, you are not ready. I know, just like exactly. when we took the CPR class, you know, you had to get that wipe off the mouth, yeah, yeah. Play, blow it. I was like, I'm like you, I ain't want to do all that. And I was like, <laughs> I ain't want to do all that. No, and I was like, no. but I'm going to save a life one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's even if I remember what to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you don't use it, you kind of right. could lose it. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. You know, sure. so. And, and in, in emergency situations, we tend to freeze up anyway. Yes. Most, most people can't operate in an emergency. They just can't. No matter how much training they had, it, it has to be a real life situation that you tr get trained in. And who's going to train you in an emergency? Right. Because mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. we was on the, um, the boat, remember, and somebody did CPR on somebody that was choking. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You didn't hear about that. We we did we did a we did a boat on the princess. We had a married okay. We took the married couples on the princess for a boat ride with the with the singles ministry, uh -huh. and this guy started choking. And one uh Cedric, Minister Cedric. He oh wow. He, yeah, he did CPR on him, cleared his airways and all that. And it was funny because they they almost missed the boat. Oh wow. They were the very last people to get on the boat. You get on, they right. were about to take off and they were way down the road. And mm -hmm. I and I was talking to the guy, so they slowed down. You know, I said, Here they come, they running now. So they then they let them off. And then that he happened. ended up saving somebody's life. Somebody life. So oh, you, wow. Right, so you don't know. Everybody is not able, even no matter how much you've been trained, but you know, that's another story. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so well, that's good. The uh, uh the things that, that your mother tried, your mother instilled in you and the stuff that she didn't, because you know, sometimes they think they tell them stuff and they really not. <laughs> right. Like you say, they'll say they, you know, I say don't do this and don't yeah, do that, right, and this'll right. happen. Yeah, you know, they don't and we yeah. ain't and we ain't listening too. That, and that's that's another point because yeah, yeah you you only really know what you know mm -hmm. and like there, even when I look back now you know my mom was the type where she would like give a look or she would do like a mm, 
you know. Uh -huh. You knew what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and, and I would just think, okay, that's just my mom being critical again. Like, you know, mm -hmm. my mom is the type where she'll start asking you a series of questions. And I'm mm. like, I don't know, mom. Like, I just don't know. Like, but I know that that's coming. So sometimes, you know, I wouldn't want to like, confide because then I know it's going to be a series yeah. of what about this and what about that and I'm like I don't know and, but you know but but my mom sometimes looking back she she would give a look or she would do a mm, like where she she was not whatever decision I was making a route I was going down she wasn't happy with it she right. wasn't pleased right. but there wouldn't be an explanation yeah. And I wouldn't ask for an explanation either, though, to be right. honest. Uh, at that point. <laughs> like most of us don't. But, yeah. but, but you but you knew but you knew she didn't like it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And and but now that now that I'm older, I can see, okay, now she wanted me to have better standards. She wanted me to expect mm -hmm. more. She wanted me, I, I knew that there was more out there, but when you only know what you know, yeah. and that's on the only that's the only viewpoint that you have, you right. know, your peripheral mm -hmm. <laughs> that right, you, right. you know, that that's all that, you know. And so, but now that as I'm going older, I'm learning to like use my intuition more. Now I see, okay, that's my, that's intuition. Mm -hmm. That's discernment. That's right. the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. And now there's times where God has showed me like, okay, that gut feeling, you know, trust it. And, right. you know, because I've been in situations to where I started to doubt Mm -hmm. that those things and i'm mm -hmm. now in a place to where i'm like okay this is what it is and mm -hmm. it's okay to trust it right well you know since you said that Standing, we can scramble. scripture <laughs> right scripturally uh you know a, a lot of the, the the people in the bible who were abundantly blessed by god mm -hmm. when they turned left when they should have turned right it was always when somebody else put a doubt in their mind mm -hmm. and instead of them trusting what god had told them or given them they hesitated because of the doubt that some person gave them. And, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times we got to, we got to get and, and so we do the same thing with our parents. Our parents put stuff in us, but we let somebody out in the street make us question yeah. the wisdom, the knowledge, the love that our parents give us. And, and, and we do that. And, and everybody, people do the same thing with what God get, has given them. And so that's the, that's the good transition. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that, that there's a faith base portion to this whole thing yes yes um at detroit way integrated health network um we have a faith-based initiative mm -hmm. and it's through our substance use department but we partner and collaborate with a lot of different churches and and um denominations okay. all in wayne county we actually have a conference coming up in august they do it every year it's called beyond the walls okay mm -hmm. and it's actually going to be in person this year okay it's well, going to be in person this yeah, year. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that's also, I can share, but give you that information. Um, okay. So you have it, but we're excited about that. Um, it, it's it's a really great, great, great conference. They mm -hmm. have a lot of different um, pastors, churches participate mm -hmm. in the conference and um, being able to merge the uh, mental health and the, um, in our faith together. Mm -hmm. um, it is very, very important. That's also something that I'm very passionate about and what led to also fired up ministries, yeah. um, mm -hmm. as well is because, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about in, in, in the, the vision or the mission for that is helping people, um, embrace their purpose through the guidance of the Holy spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, by me also being a counselor, I would see both sides. I would see those that needed help clinically mm -hmm. but then they were struggling with their faith yeah. and then i would work with those that you know that were you know in the faith-based community or in church but then they lacked the clinical skills to help them get through what they were going through right, right. and so you know i'm very passionate about bringing the two together and actually in april i did the very first in-person um, trauma healing workshop Okay. Okay. And um, it was very good just explaining about what trauma is but then also doing some hands-on activities in that workshop uh, to know that even though we might have experienced certain things in our life it didn't have to we don't have to stay broken mm -hmm. you know we can still we can learn from it we can grow from it there's still more mm -hmm. for us that god has in store and right. you know um and being able to get unstuck right and mm -hmm. so we have part two scheduled okay. uh in june Mm. Um, so I'm excited about that part two, June 20th, okay. um, in downtown Farmington at 615. And, um, yeah, so I, 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 I merged the two. I, I do the clinical 
um, educational piece, but then we do, you know, we do some of the spiritual piece and looking at, um, you know, you know, what our purpose is in life as well. Okay. So, so uh, do me a favor. I know, you know, just send me that, uh, email me that information. I sure will. All that, all that information and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. spread it around as best I can. Uh, be, yeah. you know, because one of the things, and, and, and we're actually getting into that in New Prospect now, Not mental the, the mental illness things, because yeah. the church for so long, much like the black community, <laughs> has really shied away from that discussion. Mm -hmm. But you said something that's real important. It's probably a lot of it had to do with they ain't know how to deal with it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. 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 And I think the pandemic really shown a lot of how much is needed mm -hmm. um, because of so many people were hurting and um, and actually that's actually what gave me the courage actually to actually launch it because God actually gave me the vision for fire the ministries the day that I had CJ. Okay. And um, you know, cause I had to have an emergency C-section. Mm -hmm. I, the, you know, the doctor said that I, we both could have died. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. You know, I had seizures. Um, I ended up having preeclampsia. I didn't even know what that was. Mm -hmm. um, spike in the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I was at risk of having a stroke or, you know, we, you know, so I, after I finally had uh, came to, mm -hmm. I was laying in a hospital bed asking God, I'm like, well, God, why did you allow us to live? Yeah. And, and he told me, you know, because you have fire in you. Okay. And I want okay. you to let other people know that they can have that same fire. Right. And so that was back in 2014. Yeah. And I didn't start doing things with Fire to Ministries until last year. September is Suicide Awareness Month. I started off doing a suicide prayer call okay. because that's something that I, I, if I almost ended my life when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's something that I'm still also very passionate about, but mm -hmm. it's something that people that really do struggle with Yeah, is, yeah. is suicidal thoughts, suicidal plans, not valuing their life. And so it was really put on my heart so strongly last year in September. I'm like, I have to do something. And so I started doing some things on Zoom, the the prayer call, but then also I started doing a series of grief and loss workshops okay. um, to really educate about grief, the stages of grief. But also, like I said, I'd like to be interactive. I don't like to just do a presentation. Right, right. Talk. Okay. And that's it. I, I like it to yeah. be engaging and that it's relevant for people's lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know it, it's amazing, yes. uh, how much we have inside of us that we're supposed to share mm -hmm. that that we don't either we don't know, we're not sure, or we're scared. Mm -hmm. And and it takes certain events to 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 make us come out of that, because I, I think that the pandemic, for all its bad stuff. It birthed a lot of good stuff. It did. And, and it, it did. forced pe it forced people to really, you know, not not just saying look in the mirror, but like really look in the mirror and and, and do a self assessment of what they were doing with their lives because you couldn't, mm -hmm. for the most part, a lot of people couldn't go back to work, and when they, and even being stuck at home, they realized they didn't like what they were doing anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was yeah. some burning back. You know that that's how we started this podcast because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Even though we had both already retired, so we and well before I retired, I was working from home four days a week anyway. Mm -hmm. But it was the idea uh, before I retired, I wanted to start a podcast. Didn't know how, didn't know mm -hmm. anything about it, and I learned from my niece who had started doing one. And I said, okay. well, so I'm I'm going to do this, and and then like you said, God will line this stuff up for you because all the guests for the show. I just sat down and said, who who are we going to talk to? What are we going to talk about? I know. And then I said, well, so-and-so, they doing this. So-and-so, they and I had a book full of names. Oh, wow. And it's like, okay. And then, you know, you, you ask them, and most of them immediately say, yeah. Some of them say, well, I'm so nervous. I don't know. <laughs> Get out of here. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> now we done had over 90 shows. Right. And so, because what happens is, and it, it, I know you know this in, in your line of work, I, where it, it, it tell me if I'm on, on the right track. No matter what their life is like, people want to talk about their life. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, or indifferent. They want to talk about it, but they just need some place they can trust to talk about it. Exactly. And that's that's what I'm finding, especially in our community, mm -hmm. that trust factor. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they might not go 
to an off like they, uh, you know, that a facility or office or whatever. They might not mm -hmm. want to do it formally. Right. Right. So it's like, okay, well, if you don't, you know, if that's something that's that's uncomfortable, how can we create a space right. to where you can do that and, mm -hmm. and and feel safe and and feel like you're not being judged, mm -hmm. you know? And exactly. um, you know, and, and so it's 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 so it's so needed. And I I was very blessed, even the first workshop that we did with the trauma healing, just the amount of people, because we also had a prayer port, I had a prayer jar. And I gave people um, index cards and they wrote their prayers and just, you know, just how people started to open up and, and, you know, but also knowing that there's still purpose, God still has a purpose, right. you know, there's still a plan mm -hmm. and, um, you know, being connected in a relationship yeah. with God is so important. Yeah. yeah Cause mm -hmm. we all want to be significant. You right. know, we just, yeah. we want to be valued, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's the thing. Everybody, mm -hmm. wants, everybody wants to know their life has some value. Mm -hmm. And and I, I guess it's our role, those who realize that, to let them know that it doesn't mean that you're going to be a millionaire or billionaire, mm -hmm. but you're going to make a difference in your area, in your little, in your space, and in, in the people you come in contact with. And, yes. and, and, and that's sometimes yeah, the biggest... You just can't give up. Yeah. You just can't give up. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, and then there's sometimes where um, people still get triggered over yeah. different situations, and then oh, don't know. know what to do, don't know how to cope in those moments. I I like to think of it as like an inhaler, you know, uh, you know, for those someone that has asthma, it's no big deal for them to go and get an inhaler from the doctor or get a right. script from the doctor to use right. an inhaler. And then if you have happen to have had an asthma attack, you do your little puff. You know, so that you can be better. It's almost like we need emotional inhalers. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we it, it's almost like working on the other side. Okay, you have that to deal with the physical, but what do you do to deal with the emotional? Mm -hmm. right. You know, and when you're triggered emotionally, yeah. uh, what is your inhaler gonna look like? You know, how are you going to deal with your feelings, deal with your thoughts, deal with your your actions at, you know, when things pop up, you know? Mm -hmm. So right. I'd like to say, you know, developing those emotional inhalers. Emotional yeah. toolbox, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, one of the good things is that so many now uh, uh, celebrities mm -hmm. are yeah. talking about their struggles openly, mm -hmm. and so it's it's kind of making it less taboo. Exactly. Especially in our community. Yes. Yes. Excuse me, because we, we're the ones that had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Right. We ain't trying right. to go, like you say, no formal clinical. Yeah. <laughs> and we ain't trying to do all that. Right. We'll just sit on the porch with our homies and, you know. Right. Substance abuse. <laughs> That's true, though. Self medication. Uh, That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's do. Uh, so so what else? What else? Are are are. are I know you said that the uh, your your main job has the spiritual aspect of it and then you're doing the work at the church the the, the two are they married together or they're just uh casually dating <laughs> <laughs> well you know i um so you know i and i think that and I'm, that's why I'm, one of the things like that, that i use fired up ministries for mm -hmm. is uh to be able to have that that platform and that space right. to be able to go there okay. you know um, and so, um, and I know every, every, uh, you know, church has how things are set up, you know, and, and it could look different from church to church, sure. but, um, you know, that's something that, um, I, I feel like it's still developing, you know, and it's so interesting because I, I, you know, we have a national behavioral health conference and this time it, this year was in Los Angeles and it was actually my first time going and it's where, those that in the behavioral health field come from all across the country mm -hmm. to come to this national. So this, this is a national conference, not just right. a state conference it's a national, but I was so pleased because one of the sessions was called, um, it was, it was talking about faith and souls. And it talked about how do we integrate mental health in the black church? Yeah. yeah. And I think that it was, and I was so pleased to know that that was one of the sessions yeah. Because that's that's kind of where we're at is how do we integrate it? And, and it, it's going to look differently and, uh, you know, from church to church. But, you know, I'm glad that the conversation is being had. Right. 
Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question: Was this 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 organization was it was it for all all black African American uh, counselors or was it mixed or? Diverse, oh no, it was diverse. it was anyone anyone that's in okay. the um you know the behavioral health field came from across wow. the the country. Yeah. Um, to come and it was how it was just so happened to have been housed at LA the at the convention center downtown Los Angeles and they had and they had a a, 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 a breakout on, on the yes. black church wow yes how, how many people about were there in that particular uh no, session just at, at the conference period. oh I I can't even begin to tell you I I felt like I felt like I was on college campus all over again all that walking <laughs> We had to do, and when I say the li the registration line was wrapped around outside the building, mm -hmm. just to wow. get in on day one, wow. it was it was a lot of us. It was, yeah. and, and like I said, it was my first time going. It was such a blessing to have that experience, but mm -hmm. um, I, I I can't even begin to tell you how many people were there. It was okay. it was a lot. <laughs> and so then in, in the black in the black church segment, how many how was the attendance at that? I, I would say about thirty. Okay. Yep, I'll say about thirty. Um, and it was a couple, or they, they, they started doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. they started meeting with different churches. They have their own little, I guess, business. You know, where mm -hmm. that's that's some of what they do. Okay. They they help churches integrate, um, that the mental health piece into into the church. Mm -hmm. We also had an opportunity to do an ACES uh, conference, and just so you know, ACES stands for Adverse Childhood Experience. Mm -hmm. and what it is is there's this longitudinal study that, that if you experience a certain traumatic events in your childhood mm -hmm. more than likely it will affect you in your adulthood right. whether that's mm -hmm. physically your, how you deal with your relationships substance use yeah. and so you get a score so anyone that scores four or higher you're more at risk for having problems as an adult okay. and so once again we were able to partner with the the um the the baptist uh, um um district council okay and with you know detroit wayne and then also another group called the institute Tra uh, trauma of justice economic justice and we did a full day conference just on trauma oh wow you know so the it, it's it's starting to grow it's starting yes. to get more acknowledgement the need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially for men especially, especially. for men and I, i'm glad that more of a space is even being had for for men as well well, you know, I, I I don't know much about about how they did your generation, but my generation, especially, the the word of the day was you don't show emotion, mm -hmm. and especially especially hurt, you don't show that, and so we know that if you if you don't show it one way, you're going to show it in another way, exactly, and nobody's going to be happy when you show it that other way. <laughs> I know that's right. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's good to hear that. That the church is getting, yes, yeah, moving forward that direction, that direction, down that path right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's so it's so neat. I mean, saying when you have mass shootings and oh. right, right. Well, you can't go downtown. You can't go downtown. You know what I mean? During the, in the evening and the weekend, because yeah. something happening every weekend. Some yeah, crazy. the trauma of these, you know, young people. This. Yeah, and people and people exploding about you know the one shoot with the, the, the uh, security guard in the store in Greektown got shot and killed mm -hmm. because somebody took cuts from somebody in line mm -hmm. and some and they said something about it. And now you want to start shooting? Exactly, yeah. like you said, and that was a trigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It yeah. was a trigger. So, like right, and so so black young black men especially need this counseling. They need this stuff. Yeah. Because it, you know the worst thing in the world is to wake up on a particular day and says nobody better say anything out the way to me today. Right, right, yeah. Living on edge. Uh, <laughs> right, living this, on and, edge. And this is the day I'm jumping off. So if anything happens, anybody get in my way, it's a problem. Don't blow your horn at me when I cut you off on the road. Don't look mm -hmm. at me. You know the whole thing. And, and so we we need. We need people who can step in and, and provide care and allow folks to climb down off the off the ledge. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need a lot yes. more of those, like you say, those um, seminars and stuff in the church. Yeah, without mm -hmm. doubt, without, definitely do. But also the, the in the, in the Bible plus prayer, right? <laughs> yeah. the church, and therapy. <laughs> the, the church for sure, but we, but I guess we we also need the the that to be a a, a jump off point. 
but we need to get it outside the church as well mm -hmm. in mass mm -hmm. because a lot of these folks ain't going near the church. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's And that's another good point too. So it addressing it on multiple angles. Yes. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So that's cool. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Very informative. Right. Yeah. Right. We don't took up. So, so is, is, is there something, is there something that you want to uh, share that you didn't get a chance to share? Oh, well, let me ask you this first and then mm -hmm. we do that. How is CJ doing? <laughs> CJ is doing great. Um, as you mentioned earlier, he is eight now. His birthday is in July, so he'll okay. be nine soon. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but he he does his uh, karate. He's getting really good at it, and mm -hmm. um, he's he's going to be getting his. He's working now towards his yellow belt. Okay. He's going to be getting his white and black belt. Okay. Um, soon. So, yeah. Um, I'm excited for him mm -hmm. and. You know, they grow so fast. They yeah. do yeah. grow so fast. Yeah. Every Don't time blink. I look, I'm like, did you get a little bit taller? <laughs> None of that. It's just like, you know, being in a particular sport, it just creates such good character and how to deal with anger, how to deal, you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah, especially when yeah. it teaches discipline. Yeah. So yes, it's like, yes. Yes, and he gets to go at his own pace, you know, yes. he gets to go at his own pace. And that's one of the things I like about karate. It's not too strenuous. It's right. not mm -hmm. too overbearing even for me uh, <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. goes two just wait till he's bigger and he he's flipping you <laughs> yeah. or even with the schedule because you know some sports they 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 have to Rigorous. practice yeah. multiple times throughout the week so he mm -hmm. he goes twice a week and when it comes to the testing time he gets to do it at his own pace when okay. he's ready and um, you know, and then also, uh, it it like you said, it builds self confidence mm -hmm. and, and and um yeah. self control and and, yeah. and things like that. So patience, I, look, yeah, yeah, exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so he don't take up all your time. Do you get to you get to enjoy a little bit of relaxation, don't you? Oh yes, 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 I do. Yeah, and I'm I'm excited because it's the holiday coming up. We're gonna go spend time with my sister and my okay. niece. Um, they're a year apart, and so they they you know they live about two hours away. So okay. when they do, whenever they do get to get together, they they enjoy each other's company. Right. So uh... I love it. I love it. I love it. That's All good. right. Okay. So then, so my last question to you is: Is there something that that you did not get a chance to share that you want to share and leave leave the people with a thought? The the my closing remarks. One <laughs> one I want to say thank you to you two. Thank oh, you to thanks. you two for the for the invitation to be on this platform. Um, just for the listeners out there, I, I met um, this wonderful uh, duo, dynamic duo, um, a new prospect. They were my Sunday school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and they did an amazing, they, they were just so awesome. And just to see how God is using you both and, and the growth that um, you know, with the vision that's been placed in you is mm -hmm. it's just amazing. And and uh sister Tinya here can sing, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't get it twisted now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes, but um they were there you all are amazing. So um thank you, thank you so much for the invite. Thank my you my last remark is I, I would leave with this, you know, just as I look back at my life, there's one scripture that stands out to me the most that I love. And when I, when I read it, I'm like, wow, this is just so true. And it's from Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And it says, many plans are in a man's heart, right. but God plans will prevail. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I've lived my life. I wanted to go one way and God had a completely different plan. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and sometimes it can be frustrating um, because... <laughs> <laughs> you know, we want to, you know, do what we, you know, what we, what we feel do. like yeah. is right to do what we're led to do. But then God, God would, hey, say, hey, do this now. But <laughs> just being able to walk by faith, being able to trust and 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 know that everything is going to be all right. All things work together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You remind me of uh, one of our guests, too, that was from Cannes. There was a oh, judge he, and he wanted oh. to be a DJ. My oh. father's like, <laughs> Really? Um, he, he wanted to be a DJ. A DJ. Uh, he, he's a judge. judge. Okay. 
and, and, and been one for quite a while now. <laughs> and he done, did a whole lot, a whole of, lot of stuff. Stuff he, for boys and right, he, yeah, he's he, really he's <laughs> prostate <laughs> cancer survivor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wound up being a, 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 a I think I think he wound up being a national spokesman, but I know regional spokesman for you know for the care that comes along with that. So. Yeah, but yeah, he wasn't be a DJ. It's probably right. We we got a whole lot of crazy plans, but, but <laughs> God is straighten all that out. He straightened right, all right. that out for real. Straighten all that out. Let you let you let you have your little fun. Yeah, play, play your <laughs> little play your little violin. Yeah, you gonna make money at that. All right. I'm like, mom, I'm following my heart, mom. <laughs> right, and and then he said, okay, so now I'm gonna fix you because you you try you trying to stray too far. <laughs> Not only Touch that, that shoulder, now you can't use it for that no more. If you ain't a child prodigy, you right. You just you, you yeah. might as well change your... <laughs> but, but what's interesting is when you compare music to what I do now, playing the instrument, you don't have to speak. Yeah. That, that was my way of expressing myself was sure. through music and playing mm -hmm. an instrument. Sure. And so when God called me, it's like, okay, you're going to have to speak now. Uh, and, and I, you know, for those that know me, I'm very shy, very introverted. But you know, God really had to get me out of my comfort zone. Okay, um, okay Moses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we I know that's what I say. That's zone. what I say sometimes about my own self too. I'm like, you know, like, you know I don't speak. You know, and I stutter. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh man. Right. I almost had to, to, to tie her in the chair to get her to do this. Oh. <laughs> And you're doing an amazing job. She is. She's just don't, you know, you sometimes we don't we don't see because we still we still we still see us ourselves as we thought we were. Yeah. And not as we God can be. And, yes. and so because when we do when we do the show, I do very little research. Mm -hmm. I'll read your look at your your resume at your bio, resume, whatever you want to call it. I'll look at it and pick some things down. Then I ask you some questions, then whatever you say, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. She'll research it. So you better not ever say nothing in here that ain't true. <laughs> she'll be looking like I ain't dead at all. That ain't out there. What what's this? But she, you know, we, we don't say that to them, but we, you know, look at it. <laughs> but I'll be but but she does that. And so she yeah. has all these these wonderful questions. So it, so it, it, the point is, is that we need to get out our own way. Exactly. Yes. Faith over fear. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in the faith over fear year. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that, here's my last thing. The uh the uh dang it, I'm trying, I don't want to say, I won't say the right name. You the the the, 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 the fired up ministries, fired up ministries. Ooh. Anything big coming up, anything small coming up? Yeah, so um we're gonna do the trauma healing workshop mm -hmm. uh June 20th. Um right. that registration is on Eventbrite. It's uh third uh, we will provide refreshments and like I said it's going to be part two um, you don't have to have went to part one to come to part two um, I also will be having my clarity candles uh, for sale mm -hmm. but then also I'm going to do a Father's Day uh, prayer call oh, okay. um, intercessory prayer mm -hmm. and that is going to be um, the Monday right after Father's Day right. mm -hmm. um, at 6 a.m. in the morning. Okay. And I did one for Mother's Day. I'm going to do I'm going to do one for Father's Day, but I'm actually going to have one of the ministers from Zion Hope, Minister Jason Rasco, mm -hmm. um, who is a father, and he okay. is going to partner with me uh, to do that prayer. And okay. it's just something that God put on my heart is to to do that intercessory prayer for Mother's Day and Father's Day, because um, not only out of gratitude, being grateful for our, our parents, but there are some that have lost their parents right. and are right. and are still having a hard time. And yes. so we want to be able to to pray mm -hmm. and to, to seek God on that and to help with the healing process. Mm -hmm. And and okay. you know, um, so yes, Wonderful. those those are the couple of things coming up. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, don't forget to uh, send us that information as well. I sure will. I sure will. All right. And with that, young lady. We are going to thank you for coming on here. We enjoyed you. We sure thank did. you for having me. Yeah, and I couldn't tell that you was nervous. Right. <laughs> Y'all made it easy. Y'all made it very easy. Y'all are truly the dynamic duo. It's, it's, <laughs> not, it's, there's no bragging, but it's just what we do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we want you to be comfortable. Right. We want yeah. you to be comfortable. Because, I mean, because this is a conversation. Mm -hmm. And and we most of our guests, 90% of our guests are people that we know. Okay. <laughs> and the ones that we don't know, you wouldn't know that we didn't know them. Right. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we you know friends, 
relatives or, or you know recommended us them to us and we had the same kind of conversation with them okay okay yeah. you might you might inspire gen z to become a social worker that's right you never know, you never know. all right now well, because there's somebody out there that want to be one they just don't know uh-huh uh-huh yeah. yes please have them reach out to me so i can at least give some wisdom on the differences between the counseling the social work and the psychology that's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. We don't want you thinking one thing into something else. <laughs> exactly. Yes, there is a difference. Mm. There is a difference. All right, then, sweetie. <laughs> we are going to let you go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank and again, you. Thank you and thank you. <laughs> Take care now. Virtual hug. Bye -bye. Mm.